there's a very well-known and possibly overused expression which says that failing to plan is planning to fail. And really, this so applies in the selling arena. More effective sales performance plans can be your key to getting consistent and predictable sales numbers. And, and here's the value of this. An effective sales performance plan will help create, build, and nurture a healthy sales pipeline. A well thought out and well managed sales performance plan will ensure that your salespeople attain their quotas and meet their revenue goals. And many people say, well, gee, how's a plan going to help my people achieve their revenue goals? Well, if what gets measured gets done and a plan has measurable milestones, you really should be able to manage a sales performance plan all the way through to completion. A bit like project management. Effective sales performance planning will also help you as a sales leader to even out some of those frustrating revenue peaks and valleys that you face on a monthly basis. Every territory and every individual sales rep should have a simple and well thought out and effective sales performance plan which is focused on execution and delivery of measurable outcomes. Salespeople should never begin their year without a clearly specified plan. None of your salespeople should ever begin their sales month or their sales week without a clear and specified sales performance plan. Uh, let me ask you this. Right now, if I was to take a look at your sales team's plans for next week, if I was to take a look at your sales team's plans for next fortnight if i was to take a look at your sales team's plan just for the next three to four weeks what would i see how much detail would there be my experience tells me that unfortunately most salespeople make their plans up on monday morning come in grab a cup of coffee check out our emails listen to some messages and we start our week on Monday morning. That's not planning, that's working in reaction. Every one of your salespeople must have a detailed plan outlining their key objectives and most importantly the actions necessary to ensure the fulfillment of that plan. What are their top three goals for the week? What are their top three or four or half a dozen goals for the month? What do they want to accomplish by month end, by week's end? It doesn't have to be complicated. It just has to be written down. Once the sales performance plan has been submitted to you and you sat down and you've agreed on it, it must then be reviewed regularly and coaching and follow-up must be provided as required to ensure traction of that plan. The sales performance plan must clearly specify what the salesperson is going to do how that salesperson intends to do it, when they intend to have it done by, who other than themselves will be required in order to get that job done, what resources they're going to require in order to get it done. Your annual sales performance plan should really be divided up into four by 90 day action plans. And each of these action plans will have set dates and strategies for their execution and they must be broken down and laid out in detail to enable easy execution by the salesperson. The 90-day plan should also allow for straightforward and, dare I say, effortless follow-up by you as the sales leader. Folks, if the plans are too complicated, if there's too much detail, they're not going to get done. What you want is clear simple plans, who, what, where, how, when, what resources are going to be required in order to get the job done. I guess in summary, as the saying goes, if you don't know where you're headed, then any road will get you there. The challenge, however, when it comes to selling, is that our revenue raising journey, if you like, is limited by time and resources. And that, really, if you think about it, we can't just afford to take any road in order to achieve our sales goals. 
we must have a plan and your salespeople must have a plan and your plan must explain how you're going to achieve your sales objective. So let's now talk about sales performance process. I mentioned this is one of the, the most costly mistakes that sales managers make in that report. So what actually is sales performance process and why is it so critical that we get this right? In the book Bulletproof Your Sales Team, I define sales performance process as a series of predetermined customer-centric steps and activities that enables sales professionals to measurably increase their win rates, increase revenue production, and build customer retention. If we look at the first sentence, it says, a series of predetermined customer-centric steps and activities. So what do I mean by customer-centric? Firstly, most sales processes have been set up from a sales point of view. And if you think about it, we start off with you know, prospecting and then qualification and identifying customer needs. And let's be honest, is this really seeing it from the customer's point of view? Does the customer see themselves as a quote-unquote prospect? Do customers see themselves as being qualified or not qualified to make purchase decisions? So typically, we know that traditional sales process has been built from the salesperson's point of view. The most powerful sales process that you can build is to build one that is customer-centric, one that is customer-focused. So the question that I would ask for you right now is, how customer-centric is your current sales process, if you have one? Does it focus on the steps your salespeople need to make in order to make a sale? Or does it focus on the steps that your customer goes through when making a decision to purchase? Now, each step of a sales performance process consists of several key activities and outcomes that should be both predictable as well as measurable. A well-designed sales process is really simply a powerful sales consistency creation tool. Why? Because it captures the science, the step by step by step, the following the bouncing ball for the best way to sell your specific products and services in your specific markets. Do you remember in that free report that I sent you, the costly mistake number four, which is that most sales organizations do not have a sales performance process. Do you remember that? And that is a reality for most selling organizations today. They don't have a sales process that was specifically designed for the way that their customers actually prefer to buy. And as the report said, the tragedy is that of those companies that in fact do have a formal sales process, less than 25% of their sales team actually follow it or use it. So what's the point? 